Tajal, the Antichrist, False Messiah. What's going on people? My name is Zulfaka and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is another video which I'm doing on this series about the end times and specifically the end times from an Islamic perspective. If you haven't seen the previous videos, please go ahead and watch those and be sure to subscribe so that you receive the future videos on these topics as well. So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Dajjal Antichrist figure from an Islamic perspective. As always, this is the disclaimer. Do not take what you hear from this video as truth. I am a student. I am not an expert. I am not somebody who is full of knowledge and wisdom about these things. This is something that is just a personal interest and therefore I have done my own research and I am now putting out my thoughts based on the research that I have done. Therefore, there is likely to be a lot of mistakes. Those mistakes are obviously my own. And therefore, like I said, this should not be taken as a final word because there is a lot of conjecture. There is a lot of speculation. Um, and as with these things, when you speculate, the likelihood is that you have not got the correct interpretation however this is more about exploring my interests and encouraging you to do your own research if you also share these interests so dajjal is the name given to the antichrist figure in islam the word itself means to cover up so an ancient uh, arabian practice you know they used to sell camels and, and the camels that were ill and, and the part of the body that was diseased or infected they used to cover it up with something called the dajjala if, if i interpret it correctly so they used to cover it up so that they could sell the camel for a higher price so it's this theme about covering things up about hiding things about deceiving things so one of the meanings of the word dajjal is the great deceiver so there is this theme about there being a great deception when we're talking about the dajjal so most of the descriptions about the dajjal come from what are called hadith therefore for my non-muslim audience the muslims believe in uh, the quran as the word of god the quran has not been changed it is the absolute truth it is the absolute word of god and it has not been altered in any way shape or form whereas hadith are traditions and stories um, of the prophet muhammad may peace be upon him and they are based on narrations now there is an, a whole science behind hadith which prove the authenticity um, but not all hadith are considered to be the absolute truth um, like the quran so hadith are different however there is a science to determine which ones are accurate and which ones are not and like i said most if not all of the material on the dajjal comes from the hadith in fact the word dajjal is not explicitly mentioned in the quran whatsoever which has led quite a few muslims to believe that the dajjal prophecy is not authentic and it's not true however in a later video i will explore this topic of dajjal being in the quran uh, but that is not a topic for this particular video. So the narration goes as follows and that the Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him said that every prophet has warned his people about the Dajjal but I will tell you something that no other prophet has told you and that the Dajjal is one-eyed and your Lord is not one-eyed. So one of the key attributes of the Antichrist Dajjal is that he will be one-eyed. Now, there is a description and tradition about which eye is, is blind and one, which one's protruding like a grave, etc. Uh, there are other physical descriptions like curly hair and that he will have the words Kafir Ra, which means disbeliever, printed on his forehead, and, and there are other such descriptions as well. The focus here is going to be on this concept of being one eyed. There are so many more other descriptions, but the other one that I want to focus on in this video is that the Dajjal will have a fire in one hand, which will in fact be water, and he will have water in the other hand, which will in fact be fire. So in other words, to put it in a different way, in one hand he will have what will seem like heaven, 
but those who choose it will in fact choose hell and in the other hand he will have what will appear like hell and those who choose it will have in fact chosen heaven so this then once again goes back to this idea of a grand deception everything is a deception when we're talking about the Dajjal what seems to be nice is in fact rotten and what seems to be rotten is in fact nice so whilst there are many Muslims who believe these are all literal descriptions there are quite a few who in fact say that these are all allegorical and symbolic descriptions there are those that also believe that before the Dajjal arrives the system and the society has to be set for him to arrive so there is something that's known as a Dajjalic system this is a system of governance this is a system of rule which needs to be implemented on the earth which will then allow for his arrival to come and take his throne which is interesting because if you look at the system in which we live today what is it other than a great deception so the Dajjal will be the antichrist in other words he is the opposite of Christ he is the opposite of Jesus and in Islam one of the names for Jesus is Ru'Allah which translates as the spirit of God this obviously plays behind the idea that Jesus was a very spiritual being and everything about Jesus was spiritual therefore if Jesus is spiritual and the Dajjal is the opposite of Jesus that would indicate that the Dajjal is materialistic which therefore makes perfect sense because we live in a very materialistic time the society is very materialistic it's not spiritual at all in fact the spirit has pretty much gone from a lot of places and the majority of people living in the world today are very materialistic in nature and coming back to the symbology there is a theory espoused by very few uh, islamic scholars so it's not the mainstream accepted version but there are still those islamic scholars that are of this opinion which is as follows the dajjal being blind in one eye is not a physical defect the blind eye is in fact the internal eye the third eye in, in other words he will not have spiritual insight in fact he will not have a soul he will not have a spirit he will just be a purely material being and his goal will be to do the same for others in other words the idea of taking away spirit taking away the third eye and replacing it with purely materialism and if we're being honest a pretty good job has been done of that already so now some of the previous videos are going to be making a bit more sense the spiritual war going on right now is all about taking away the spirit the third eye the intuition and replacing it with a purely materialistic perception of the world and of reality the stage being set has to be one that's purely based on materialism and it has to remove spirituality it has to remove intuition and it has to remove anything to do with the soul and the spirit the other thing that i find interesting about this idea of the dajjal not having a soul um, and not having a spirit is that it parallels with what's going on around the world right now in terms of the AI human hybrid that the job could very well be an automaton it could be a hybrid AI human being and not to go off on a little tangent but um, I remember reading something about when the devil was cast out by God he took uh, an army of demons with him um, in Islam the demons are referred to as jinns and the devil is the head jinn and jinns are created from smokeless fire which could be symbolic of electricity but either way it's just a different form of energy it's a fiery natured energy which obviously plays into the symbology of the fires of hell and, and, and the devil being a fiery being and i can't quite remember where i read it but the story when that when the devil was cast out uh, the demons that joined him were promised that they would be given human bodies as a reward for following the devil so the promise of the devil was that the jinn would be given the human 
bodies. And the reason for that is the actual story of why the devil was cast out by God. The story goes that God created Adam, the first human being, and then he told all of the angels to bow down and prostrate. All the angels follow the order, except the devil, who is referred to as Idlis in uh, the Muslim tradition. He was the only one not to bow down, and he did not follow the command of God. And he didn't bow down because of pride. He had this feeling of pride. I am superior to these beings. They are made out of clay. I am made out of fire. Why should I bow down to an inferior being? In other words, the promise that the devil gave to the other demons and the other jinns was that he would help them if, if they followed him. He would help them host human bodies and, and these were the bodies that were worshipped by all the other angels etc so he was basically promising them control over the superior human body and this is what started all the demonic possession and all the exorcism etc etc but that will be a topic for another video what i find interesting in all of that is this idea that the the Dajjal will be the head of this AI hive, hive mind, he will be a half human, half robot hybrid and uh, the, the plan for him is to make the rest of humanity, all of humans, like him. Brain dead, unable to think, unable to analyze, uh, completely, completely separated from their soul, completely separated from their spirit uh, and then just imagine that you have these demons, these jinns possessing these human bodies and they are all under the control of this hive mind being the Dajjal himself. Another thing that I find interesting from the description so far is that the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, stated that all of the prophets have warned their people about the Antichrist Dajjal. This means that even the first prophet, which was the first man, Adam, warned his nation about the Antichrist Dajjal. It's interesting because there are certain esoteric theories that the Antichrist Dajjal is not only already on earth but has been in existence for a very very long time. The implications of this are many and I mean we could start going into the idea of time travel etc but why I find it interesting about Adam is the story of Adam and Eve. Obviously we all have heard some kind of version about it but that Eve was unfaithful to Adam and that caused the fall from the Garden of Eden. And I just want to read a few things off Wikipedia. Now, now Wikipedia isn't a source to be re relied upon but this is just something that I found interesting so uh, I am not saying that this is an authentic saying, I am saying I saw this and I thought, and I thought it was interesting. There are subsequent hadiths narrated by Abu Huraira, the authenticity of which is contested, that hold that Muhammad, may peace be upon him, designates Eve as the epitome of female betrayal. Narrated Abu Huraira, the prophet said, were it not for Eve, no woman would ever betray her husband. And in another section it said, Abu Huraira reported the prophet as saying, had it not been for Eve, a woman would never have acted unfaithful, unfaithfully towards her husband. And what I found interesting about those few quotes is this idea which is prevalent across the board when you think about Adam and Eve, you think about the devil, you think about lust uh, and, and, and this idea that there was some kind of sexual connotation to what happened in the garden of Eden and there is this fringe theory about the serpent seed. The theory about the serpent seed is basically that when the devil tempted Eve, he tempted her with desire and lust and, and they had a relationship whereby the end product was the birth of Cain. So you've heard the story of Cain and Abel, the two brothers, Cain killed Abel and the theory behind that is that Cain killed Abel because he was part of the serpent seed. He was the result of the union between Eve and the devil. And since then, there's just been this bloodline of evil. So, so you know, you've heard of many theories about bloodline. So back when humanity first started, you, you straight away had 
the two different bloodlines of good and evil. You had the good from Adam and all the prophets following, and then you had the bad from Cain, who committed the first sin by killing Abel back when it all started. And something that carries on from this bridged theory is that Tubal Cain was a descendant of Cain, and a descendant of Tubal Cain was Hiram Abiff. Hiram Abiff was the grand architect of the Temple of Solomon, which we've already discussed previously is an important aspect, and we're going to talk about why that's important even more in a later video. And as I mentioned earlier, there is this idea that the Antichrist Dajjal may be a time traveller, but then that starts delving in to parallel universes, wormholes and different dimensions which while interesting are just too much for this current video. But linked to that is the connection with the Antichrist Dajjal and the Egyptian god Horus. So back in ancient times the pagans worshipped Horus as the sun god and there have been many similarities between the story of Horus and the accepted version of the widely popular version of Jesus and Christmas Day. So Horus was the sun god and a master of time, which again links with the idea of time travel. Um, and this is also where we get the word hours from. So hours is an anagram of Horus. It's also where we get the word horizon from, which is basically Horus rising. And the reason why they worshipped the sun in those in those days was obviously because there wasn't any electricity. So therefore, when it got dark. It was a scary time and then when the sun rose it obviously caused a lot of delight and happiness and a feeling of safety and security and the interesting thing is that the celebration of horus was on the 25th of december so today we we're told that jesus was born on the 25th of december but historically the worship on the 25th of december was with horus and other characters like Mithras and uh, a number of other past pagan gods. The idea behind that is the positioning of the sun. So when we have summer, the sun is at the highest point in the sky and then as we move towards winter, the sun gets lower and lower and lower towards midday. So midday in the summer, the sun is obviously at its highest point, midday in the winter, the sun is at its lowest point. You'll notice this now, so obviously when in the summer uh, here in, in, in the UK, the the time for sunset, the time to attend in the, in the clock at night, whereas in the winter, sunset is around about four o'clock in the afternoon. So obviously there's a big difference and part of that is because of the daylight saving hours, but essentially the timing of sunset gets lower every single day from summer towards winter. Uh, until it gets to the 22nd of December because what happens on the 22nd of December is that the sun sets at the same time as the 21st of December so on the 22nd and on the 23rd and on the 24th of December the sun sets at exactly the same time historically the pagans saw this as the sun being dead and then on the 25th of December the sun rises again and that's when they said that God's son is born but not S-O-N son but instead it was S-U-N God's son was born on the 25th of December that's where the idea of Christmas in the pagan tradition came from and it wasn't until the Council of Nicaea where the Romans adopted Christianity as the official religion of the Roman Empire where this got changed. So 25th of December was not a Christian holiday. 25th of December isn't really relevant to Jesus at all. It was just adopted when the, the Romans adopted Christianity as their religion. Why is all of that relevant? Well, my theory is that we have been deceived. So like I mentioned earlier, the whole point of the Dajjal is to be this great deceiver. Humanity has been deceived to accept the 25th of December as the birthday of Jesus, when in fact it was the birthday of the sun god Horus. 
What else do we know about Horus? Well, as the legend goes, he had a fight with his brother Set, and during that fight, he lost one eye. Do you see the connection there? Essentially, we have a one-eyed sun god impersonating Jesus. Or at the very least, we've all been conditioned and programmed to accept the story of Horus as the story of Jesus. Could this have been deliberate? To make people believe that when Horus or the Antichrist, the One-Eyed King returns, people will believe he is Jesus? Could it be that this is one of the greatest deceptions of all time? Could it be that humanity has been programmed and conditioned to believe that the 25th of December was the birthday of Jesus? Funnily enough, this is where you get all the One-Eyed symbolism, especially in the secret societies. Um, obviously the Eye of Horus has got different meanings and different connotations. For some it's the Eye of Wisdom, it's the Third Eye, it's the Eye that gives humanity its spiritual power. On the other hand, it's also been associated with some very evil satanic cults uh, and the One Eye is the symbolism of their one true God. Who is their one true God? Well, for Muslims, the answer is simple the one-eyed god the one-eyed king is the antichrist the Jal. historically that may have been horus it may not have been horus but ultimately it just seems a great coincidence the story of the one-eyed god horus is identical to the story of jesus today if the world has already been conditioned and programmed to worship the 25th of december jesus as the son of god it would make it easier for the Antichrist Dajjal to come back and impersonate himself as Jesus. So that was a lot to digest. Obviously there's been a lot of information in this video, there's been a lot of speculation. Like I said at the start, there is no claim to be true here. This is just things that I find interesting. Like I said, do your own research, but ultimately please let me know what you think about the content of this video. How do you feel about these? connotations how do you feel about these speculations what is your idea of the antichrist go ahead and hit the subscribe button and i will see you in the next video